All right, so I've mentioned the freight forwarder a lot in this program, but I've not broken down exactly what they do in simple plain terms. That's exactly what I want to do right now. So first things first, what exactly is a freight forwarder? Well, the definition of a freight forwarder is a company that receives and ships goods on behalf of other companies. And that's essentially what they are. The great thing about freight forwarders is that they provide an all-in-one service to us as sellers in that they arrange the importing of your goods, store the items in their hubs, complete any additional work required in the hub, and then forward onto Amazon on our behalf. Freight forwarders enable us to focus on running the business as well as freeing up our time to research and prepare new items. Don't make the mistake of trying to do their job to save money. You aren't saving anything as these processes are extremely time consuming and logistics in general brings with it plenty of headaches that you don't want to take into your business or take on personally. Freight forwarders also serve as a central point of contact throughout the entire importing process. This simplifies everything to you as you simply speak to your one point of contact who is taking care of everything for you. They are the first connection between you and your supplier and are used to arrange the inland transportation of goods from the supplier to the container ship, the preparation of shipping and export documents, dock warehousing and booking cargo spaces. They will also help with negotiating freight charges and consolidation on your behalf, as well as document delivery, deconsolidation and freight collection. Forwarders are essentially required to make importing possible and simple. The important thing to note is that Logistics is a complicated process. You are, after all, moving stock halfway around the world. My advice is to try to be as understanding as possible with the forwarder, especially when delays happen, because take it from me, they are going to happen, and it's just the way it is. So here's how the freight forwarder works in simple terms. We always start at the point where you place your order with the supplier, and this is the exact moment that you should be contacting your freight forwarder to inform them about your order so that they can begin arranging collection and delivery for you. Production finishes, your forwarder will arrange for the items to be collected and transported inland to the container for onward delivery to the destination. After a certain period of time, now this depends on whether you're using air freight, air express or sea freight, the forwarder will arrange all the customs and import tax payments for you. When you make this payment and clear the items, the forwarder will bring the items to their freight hub for onward shipment to Amazon. Now, how do you go about engaging with a freight forwarder? As always, you must speak to your freight forwarder immediately after ordering. It's critical to connect your freight forwarder to your supplier so they can liaise on your behalf and get things arranged. This ensures a smooth transition from production to transit without your ongoing involvement. It also enables you to be proactive as opposed to rushing. Generally, you'll communicate with your freight forwarder via email. They are all different and have their own processes in place. It's ideal for the freight forwarder to be in the destination country. However, it's not mandatory. I do recommend trying to achieve this though, as it's always good to know that your forwarder can put their hand on your items if required. So you might be wondering what you need to have to book a shipment with a freight forwarder. Well, let's take a look at that for you now. The first thing we require is the factory or supplier company name. Next, we'll require the factory address, as well as the contact details for the manufacturer. This includes the name, email, and phone number of the contact within the factory that you've been dealing with. Next, we require the total order size in cubic meters, as well as the total order weight expressed in kilograms or pounds. Generally, we express our European orders with European forwarders in kilograms and the US in pounds. You'll also require a carton count. However, you may not be able to receive this from the supplier until they complete production and box up your items. Again, remember your items must be packed in an identical number per box. When they give you the carton count, they'll also be able to give you the dimensions. Finally, you'll require the destination address, which generally will be the freight forwarder's hub address, unless you're shipping to a location of your own. So a quick note here, if you're shipping to both Europe and the US, then you'll have to create two separate shipments, potentially with two separate freight forwarders. I generally try to keep everything under one roof here, even if the forwarder isn't physically present in one location and uses a partner there, but that choice is up to you. So collate all this information and send it to your freight forwarder via email 
or whatever method of communication they use the moment you place your order. Now, there's certain information that you're going to require to be able to import your items. Make sure you get onto these as soon as you can. The first is the purchase invoice, also known as a PI or commercial invoice from the supplier. Send this to your freight forwarder as well as the packing list so that they know exactly what's in the order. You'll require release documents as well to be able to release your items from customs. You will be able to receive these from your supplier the moment you pay your balance with them. Next, you'll require a HS code or commodity code for each of the different items you're importing. You'll see how to find this in a moment. You'll also require an EIN and customs bond for importing into the US and an EORI for importing into the UK and EU. Now don't worry if this seems confusing as we're going to go through each of these for you one by one. We'll begin with the PI or purchase invoice. This comes from your supplier and is something that you'll generally receive during the ordering process. If you don't, you can request it. The purchase invoice details the value of the order, the name and address of the supplier, the name and address of your company, the invoice number and date, the quantity and unit price of the items, the total quantity and total price, and finally, the supplier's banking information. Next, we have the packing list. Like the purchase invoice, this also comes from your supplier. You'll receive this at the end of the production process, and it will list the supplier name and address details, your company details, the total number of units and cartons, the weight of the cartons, and finally, the dimensions of the cartons. This enables us to know the size of the order, as well as how everything is packed. As always, each box should be identical in size. That doesn't mean that every different product you do must be packed exactly the same. No, it simply means that each individual SKU must be packed identically. Remember, we're always trying to maximize every master carton at all times, to pack the most amount of units in there safely and without going over the maximum box weight that we're allowed. Next, we have the release documents. Like the purchase invoice, this also comes from your supplier. You'll receive this after paying for the order in full. The release documents can be physical or digital. When they're sent digitally, it's known as a telex release. The release documents show everything that's contained in the purchase invoice and packing list. Officially, transfer the ownership of the goods from the supplier to you. Without these documents, the order can't clear customs and will incur charges after a period of time on the port. This is known as demurrage. As long as the freight forwarder receives the documents promptly after you've made payment to the supplier, then you'll be fine. Now we move on to HS codes. These are codes that identify what a product is. Each code has a charge associated with the importation of it. This is expressed as a percentage of the value of the item. To find out what HS code your different items fall under, you can head to www.dutycalculator.com. Click Calculate Import Duty as shown here. Then all you do is fill in the required details and click Calculate Import Duties and Taxes. Note that the HS code may not be exactly what the item is. That is, if you're selling a pool rake, it'll likely fall under something like swimming pool accessories rather than pool rake. Your freight forwarder will help you with this if you're having difficulty. To import into the US, your company requires an EIN. This is a number that indicates that you're an importer. If the goods you're importing have an invoice value of over $2,500, you'll require a customs bond. You must post a customs bond to ensure that all duties, taxes and fees owed to the federal government are paid. Again, work with your freight forwarder for more help here. If you use a customs broker to clear your goods through Customs and Border Protection, the broker's bond may be used to secure your transaction. You have the option of, de of obtaining a single entry or continuous bond. The type of bond you elect to obtain ultimately depends on how often you import into the US. For instance, if you only import on occasion, the single entry bond is recommended. If you import frequently and through various ports of entry, the continuous bond is beneficial and economically the best choice. To import into the UK, your company requires an EORI number, regardless of where that company originates. Your freight forwarder can help you acquire these numbers. Most of them are very simple to get indeed. EORI is a number that classifies your company as an importer. It's easy and free to acquire. Goods must be in transit to be eligible to apply for this number. As you can see, engaging with a freight forwarder earlier on simplifies 
and almost fully outsources these processes. It's truly a no-brainer investment.